Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a ridiculously cheap RGB cooler, which may end up being absolutely useless. But who knows? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a cooler from Goldenfield. Now this is their, well, it's actually got multiple names. It's known as the Mangosteen, also the Mankit, and also the W11. So this is a traditional clip style cooler, suitable for AMD and Intel builds. I'll flash up the list of supported chipsets and platforms on the screen right now, so you can see if it'll fit your system. Essentially, this has a maximum TDP of 95 watts, and costs around about £10 here in the UK. And for your £10, you do get a reasonably decent cooler for the money, in my opinion. But does it perform very well? Well, we'll find that out at the end of the video. But first, we'll go through, take a look at the packaging, do an unboxing, do an installation, give it a test, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So starting off with the packaging, it's uh, pretty bland, does the job, keeps everything nicely packaged, and yeah, tells you what it does. So we've got some specifications on the side. So we've got a 127 mil fan, it's around about 80 mils high, so we'll fit in some of those smaller mini ITX builds. It has a DC fan, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would have been nice to have seen PWM, but still we can get around that with most BIOSes these days. Also, we've got fan RPM, maximum RPM, 1800 RPM, which is going to be pretty loud, I think, and minimum RPM of 200, so that is going to be whisper quiet. Minimum rating for the fan is 7 volts DC, and maximum is 12 volts DC. The fan bearing itself is a hydro bearing, so hopefully it should be quite low noise and not have that kind of nasty clicking that we sometimes get on these cheaper fans. So let's get back to the name of this thing. The name is a little bit weird. So Mankit or Mangosteen. Well, Mangosteen is a fruit, as far as I'm aware, from Thailand. And Mankut was named after a tropical storm, which is uh, probably not the best of things. Tropical storm Mangit was known to rip windows out of buildings and all that kind of stuff, so... Uh, Hopefully it doesn't have the same effect here at Mike's Unboxing. So enough of the naming, let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get. So first up we get a cooler, which uh, actually doesn't look too bad. You've got a black anodized fin stack, and also on the bottom you've got this nicely polished base. No copper slug in here at all, this is all aluminium or some form of alloy. But again, should do a similar job to things like the Thermaltake UX100 and some of the other coolers we've seen based around a similar design. The fan blade itself is a nine blade design and has a kind of um, almost like an opaque plastic blade, which hopefully should let some of the RGB shine through. Also around this outer edge, there's RGB lighting. Unfortunately, there's no control over this whatsoever. It just does what it wants on a random basis. But again, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on when we get it installed. Very few highlights on this thing. The only thing is there's the Golden Field logo, which is on the bottom here which weirdly is kind of offset to where the clips are. So yeah, that's a little bit of an odd one. And that is the main retention mechanism for AM4, AM3, AM2. So we've got the standard clips, which can be a little bit fiddly, but hopefully it won't be too bad. They have put a rather nice cutout in this section to get your thumb in there so you can put some pressure on, which is a nice addition. And they've done the same on this side. Unfortunately, because of that, you do miss out on some of the airflow benefits. You will get airflow escaping through this section rather than being focused through the fin stack. Again, going down to the connectivity, we've got a single wire, which is a three pin PWM style connection, but only for DC use, not PWM. Also in the box, we get the Intel mounting ring for 1151, 1155, 1156, all those kinds of chips. Also, we get a little accessories bag and there's the push pin clips for those Intel mountings, and also there is a small sachet of thermal grease. Although we'll be using MX4 in our testing to compare with the MX4 and also the Thermotake Contact 12 that we've already got in our system behind us. So that's all the parts introduced, so let's get on and install it. Okay, so first of all, we've got our MX4 compound, so we'll put a little blob of compound on the center of the CPU. And just a little tiny bit there, that should be more than enough. And next up is to install the cooler. So to avoid any rookie errors, remove the film from the base of the CPU, CPU cooler rather, and then we can decide which way around we want to mount it. Now I think having the thumb pressure, this section here at the bottom, is going to be easier for access because of the VRM coolers and etc. on the other end. So I'm going to get this bit and loop it through the back first of all. 
try and get that hooked on. So there's a nice reassuring clip noise there. And then get the thumb area, get it roughly lined up. A little bit of pressure. And there we go. That was uh, pretty simple. And actually doesn't look too bad. So now what we've got to do is attach the DC connector to the CPU header, which is just next to our RAM up the top here. And then we'll just tuck the wire out of the way. And that is it for the installation. So now we've got to do is fire it back up and see what it actually performs like. So moment of truth, let's fire it up. And it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we've done a little bit of testing and as you can probably see, I've got the cooler on the desk. It isn't in the PC. A very good reason for that as you've possibly seen from some of the B-roll which may have been coming up already, depending on how I edit this, I'm not too sure I'm gonna put it together. But essentially, uh, yeah, this thing lost all control of temperatures. Now the processor in the rig is a AMD Ryzen 5 2600, just a standard one, just with precision boost overclocking enabled, no other overclocks, pretty much bog standard. And that's a 65 watt chip. So this in theory should be able to cope that very easily. This is rated for 95 watts, but unfortunately the temperatures did start running away under a all core load, which is a synthetic load from CPU Z. And we got up to 85, 86 degrees, at which point I thought, no, I'm gonna pull the plug, this isn't happening. With the thermal tape cooler, normally we'd get up to around about 59, 60 degrees thereabouts, and it would hover there for a while. Also did notice that CPU Z with the all core load, we scored a point score of about 3200, 3204, I think it was with the thermal tape cooler. And with this one, we were dropping down 3140, 3160, something along those lines. So it was beginning to throttle pretty hard as expected from those sort of temperatures. So where does this leave us? This is a cheap cooler. It does look actually quite nice. And the RGB illumination around the outside, although it doesn't move and there's no real pattern to it, it does look quite nice. So I think for much lower rated CPUs, maybe Ryzen 3s, Athlons, that kind of thing, it would be a decent replacement for the stock Wraith cooler. It may not cool it better, but certainly it does look a little bit nicer. But unfortunately for anything, I would say realistically, of the mid-range processors, Ryzen 5 2600 for, as a good example, I think this is a complete fail and I certainly couldn't recommend it. So that pretty much sums it up. If you've got a very, very low power CPU, APU, maybe some kind of media center PC, and you want to give it a little bit of bling, then this is definitely worth a look. I did look at the paste on the bottom and the paste, we've got a relatively good coverage on there. So it wasn't as if I didn't have enough paste. It just didn't seem to want to do the job. This is a lightweight cooler. It comes in around about 26, 27 grams. So there really isn't enough thermal mass there to actually get rid of the heat quick enough, despite the fact that the fan actually does a reasonable good job and the downdraft does keep the VRMs and all that kind of stuff cool. But I think, yeah, I can't recommend this one, sorry, even though it is nice and cheap and I'd love to be able to say it's a great little cooler, but unfortunately it isn't. So let me know what your thoughts in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we won't catch you using one of these in your system anytime soon. Thanks for watching.